Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Kubo and the Two Strings. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know the movie's been out for several years, but there is some, some news about it. The creator of it, Shannon Tyndall, basically was swindled. Tyndall was swindled out of Kubo and the Two Strings. So the NDA must be it. Must be up, yeah. It probably was a multi-year uh, gag order, but he had a thread on Twitter that Cartoon Brew uh, reposted or posted a link to, and he talks about how uh, Leica basically took Kubo and the Two Strings. Now, I, I like the movie quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think it was a very, very good movie. I don't know how much of it was his involvement and how much of it was uh, you know, other people that worked on it, but it's, it's definitely a cautionary tale of what can happen when you go through a studio system, even mm -hmm. a smaller studio, that unless you protect yourself, or I don't know if he had an agent or what, but he basically got pushed out of his own project. So yet another cautionary tale for creatives, uh, courtesy of Cartoon Brew. We're gonna talk about this, because this happens a lot, and you don't find out about it until years after the fact. <laughs> NDA. NDA is up, and a lot of times it's these creators wanna work very badly on a project and it gets greenlit and they don't either they don't read their contract very well um or whatever but this happens with showrunners all the time like they get pushed to have their own cartoon series because when you sell a show like cartoon network or you know whoever they they own the show right that's what happens you know you know they can make another show yeah later and they ruin it which we've seen many times powerpuff girls yeah mm -hmm. and this happens time and time again so let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 266,000 subs. Thank you for the support. We do talk about the animation industry, having worked in and around, and having friends in the animation industry. And um, this one's pretty sad. I actually had, had not heard this before, that uh, he basically got hosed. He got hosed. And Kubo is such a good movie, too. It is a good movie. Um, you know, so this is coming from Cartoon Brew. How Kubo and the Two Strings went from pure heaven to nearly breaking creator Shannon Tyndall. Um, so he talks about the thread. I'll just go out to the thread here. Because, it's easier to go. Yeah, and we'll see. But, um, you know, he worked with, uh, you know, some different people working on Nimona and Ultraman at Netflix now. But um, this is Shannon Tyndall's thread on Twitter. A lot of folks feel like they've had the rug pulled out from underneath them. So with the hope that this might help someone, I'm going to talk about something I don't talk about. My time as director on Kubo. Now, probably in reference to, since he's working at Netflix right now, a lot of people having their uh, shows canceled mm -hmm. at Netflix. A lot of people in animation, as they understand it from some of our contacts uh, and some people who follow this, like there is a lot of freaking out behind the scenes right now at Netflix. Because if you're working in animation at Netflix, there's no guarantee that you're going to have a job. Yeah. Uh, you know, just saying. So back in 2001, he talks about how he had the crazy idea about a little one-eyed boy who made magical art to heal his mother. And he's talking about you know, all of the uh, stuff that went on with his own family. Um, and he got a lot of the inspiration from his wife's mother having to mention all that. Uh, the idea stewed and marinated and eventually evolved into an actual story, one I thought might be meaningful to folks. So I reached out to my former employers at Leica, uh, adventurous folks who I thought might like Kubo. I pitched it to them um, at the Tam O'Shanter, not far from Walt Disney's old table, and they loved it. A few weeks later, I had an offer to start and off we went. Okay. I was insanely excited. The idea was wild and extremely personal, and someone was going to pay me to develop and eventually direct it. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times people give their... Now, there's a difference between being work for hire, where you're working on somebody else's existing IP. Like, I'm going to make a Batman movie. Well, obviously, DC Comics and Warner Brothers owns Batman. Uh, you can add to the Batman mythos, but they, at the end of the day, own Batman. That's understood. Now, when you're coming up with your own idea completely from scratch and pitching it, you just kind of assume that like you're going to be the guy throughout the whole duration mm -hmm. of the project. And that's not what happened. I worked for a while in LA hiring a brilliant writer, Mark Hames, who I just collaborated with on another project. He's the best, by the way. So he didn't have anything to do, to do with this. Uh, we'd meet every Monday and Wednesday at Hugo's for breakfast, started working on the script. Uh, it was a dream, pure heaven. We became close friends and still are. So he, no bad feelings there. We conjured something special. How do I know? Because the studio and everyone who read it told us so. Well, yeah. And it's got a like a 90-something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I'm hard on myself, but I took those compliments. Dang it. It wasn't the kernel of an idea. 
as has been mentioned in the past. It was very close to the film you saw, and when we delivered it, I also delivered a 17 a uh, 17 foot character lineup, a paper sculpture of Hanzo made by my made by my wife, and an animatic for the opening made with my pal Hashi. Uh, you can see it here. Proof that wasn't the notion of something. There was a vision there built with incredible collaborators. The studio loved it so much they greenlit the film, and we began. We brought together an amazing team, including my pal and current directing partner. So he keeps going out like, I'm not throwing shade at any of these people I worked mm. with, just so they know. You know, it's nothing personal. After a few months, we had our first screening, something not far at all from the film you saw in theaters. So it's not like they had to scrap it. No, they, they pretty much used what was there. Yeah. They loved it. They loved it so much that the next thing you know, I was flying to L.A. to direct superstar talent. Yes, I directed The Voices in the first screening. All seemed well. But it wasn't. Uh, here comes the here comes the thing. Not at all. There were signs, things I should have seen, but I was in it and loving it. Long story short, after nearly two years of work, I was removed as director, removed from something that came so deep from my heart, and it nearly broke me. Well, I can imagine. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, his idea, and I mean, people working with him to flesh it out. But, you know, they were the team that that did the whole thing. Yeah, and this was his his story based on on uh, an idea he had in his family experiences, and you know, so he's like, you know, people are saying it's a kernel of an idea. This kind of reminds me. I remember reading a year or so ago about uh, the ending of of Newhart, the Bob Newhart show, the the big twist ending where it turned out that uh, Newhart was actually a dream. Yeah, and the original character from the Bob Newhart show, and it was uh, Bob Newhart's wife that came up with the idea, but the writers took credit for it because it got Emmys. It was such yeah. a groundbreaking thing, but it was actually her idea because she's like, oh, yeah, wouldn't it be funny if it turned out the whole thing? Since it's so weird and it's so disconnected from the original New Heart show, it was just like a fever dream that your character yeah. had. And it had been talked about, I guess, at dinner multiple times. It was her idea. So Bob Newhart actually had to go out later in interviews and say, no, my wife totally came up with that that idea. And the showrunners kind of stole it stole it and didn't to give credit. her credit. Yep. I lost weight. I lost sleep. I lost confidence in who I was and what I could do, but those same people who helped me make the film uh, become what it became were there for me. They kept me afloat. Um, I did it. I got a little short with Google. Yeah, so he came back from that. He didn't rock it back. There were more failures, big and small, but I'd learned to deal with it. I learned to lean on those around me. Um, I share this not from anger or spite. I'm still exceedingly thankful that something as personal as Kubo was released, and I still recognize him as the child I had imagined. That's a blessing. Uh, don't let others, corporations, or setbacks get in the way of your story. So this is about, I think, I think Netflix, because a lot of people are getting fired yeah. from, from Netflix now. And they're like, don't let it get you down. But I'm also like, from a business perspective, uh, from a business perspective, make sure you get a damn good contract if it's your idea. <laughs> make sure you have an agent. Well, what's really sucky is after he did all that work and he directed the voice actors and the first screening and everything else, the other person got all the credit credit for being a first-time yeah. director. Yep. And yep. that's that's what's not cool, you know? Yeah. So um, this is interesting. People are like, oh, yeah, maybe there's more about going on behind the scenes and all that. And I'm sure there is. There's a lot. I mean, that's the thing. Hollywood is very – cutthroat and if people think they can add another notch to their belt mm -hmm. oh know, hollywood's terrible yeah absolutely do it because you're only as good as your last movie right well i'll tell you what I mean, we were we were in um la what uh after graduate college my sister my then brother-in-law and, and i went to la and we were going to go work with this one person that had connections to hit to my ex-brother-in-law and he was supposed to be this, this you know reliable agent type person and all this other stuff which turned out he wasn't but we went out there surprise surprise i know right so yeah. we went out. To, I, I, I really. This is one of the reasons I don't like LA at all. So we went out down. We went out there, and um, I was. It was everybody's so fake. I mean, not everybody, but the people that we were around, probably because this person were very, very fake. And this person was like the worst of the worst. Like he wanted to brag about himself and all his accomplishments. Like I was named in, you know, celebrity whatever, and the same volume as so and so. And it was like, yeah, from thirty years ago. But beyond that, he took us to different places, and he had us. Um, there was a church or something. I guess it's a big deal. And he had us stand outside of it and like sing something because we were for we performed and did stuff and um then he said okay now you said you can perform we performed here well we didn't perform there well they don't know that there's a picture of you singing here <laughs> and i was like what the hell and it was like that but the yeah. bunch of other stuff and it was all about lies manipulation how you can you know pretend something to get ahead yep. um how he could take credit for your work and everything else and it was it was absolutely horrendous i think i was there like a couple days and i was like 
fuck this. I went home. I'm like, I don't want to be any part of this because this is not, I, I, this is not who I am and I don't want to do it. There are, there are some really good people who work in Hollywood, um, you know, but there, there is a lot of bullshit that goes on. Oh too. yeah. For every one good person you have, you have, you know, hundreds of these shysters. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is, you know, people wonder like with, you know, different shows and TV series and stuff like how does, how does this person get another chance and another chance and another chance if the numbers aren't there? And in many cases, it's who, you know, um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of nepotism that goes on there too. So it's, it's harder, you know, somebody could have the best idea in the world, but if they don't have the track record or the connections that another person has, or now it's, you know, the fashionable identity or whatever, they're not going to get as far. No. And if you had an idea, you know, somebody, people steal all the time, but if they're the right kind yeah. of person, they get through. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. That Well, okay. So you want to talk, we talked a lot about Disney. I mean, Disney has stolen allegedly so many ideas from people. Lawsuits. There's been a lot of lawsuits. A lot of lawsuits. Um, we may or may not have some inside inside baseball on that. Oh yeah. We I may or may that. not have been involved. Uh, Pitching some, a show that may or may not have ended up being the name almost the, the basis name of for a, another another show. Yeah, when you compared that show that got picked up first and the <laughs> synopsis and what they po what they eventually released it as after our pitch was it was very conveniently similar. Might have been cheaper to do it in live action than animate it. Um, so you take some of the parts of it and then you just, cause what was picked up for that show, including the name was something completely different uh, than what was posted afterwards. But you know, but, you agree that if there's any similarities, you understand that it's just completely coincidental. Yeah. That was, the well, yeah. So just our, our own experience there was, yeah, we had, you know, some stuff optioned, but you know, part of the deal is you take the money, you're not allowed to come back later and complain if they do something very similar. And companies like that, and it's not just Disney, a lot of studios do this, but they'll actually option graphic novels and other stuff like that just to sit on it. They have no intention of- I was thinking that like, the, like Del was it Delilah Dirk? I think that's uh, yeah, what they were doing. I'll, I'll name check. I mean, it's a very good comic, Delilah Dirk. I, I remember the creator of that on Twitter being like, Oh my God, I got optioned by Disney. I'm like, but Disney, Was it Disney, yeah, yeah, but Disney owns Indiana Jones now. They're probably, I, I could be wrong, but they're probably just optioning your comic to keep you out of play so another studio can't do an Indiana Jones stuff because Delilah Dirk is very similar to Indiana Jones. But it's a female. But a female lead. Oh, and they haven't done anything with it though, have they? Has no, it been released been by now? Probably. I think in our case, we had like a two or three year, I'm trying to remember. I think it was like a three year. That but it was released a while It was ago. released back to us. But yeah, in some people's cases though, they, they will. They'll, they'll take the ideas they like. They'll put it into another property. And it's not, again, not just Disney. A lot of studios do this. And at the end of the day, it's about getting the product out there, making as much money as possible. And sometimes you got to break a few eggs. And unfortunately it winds up being the creatives who right. work on it. And in a lot of cases, legally, there's You're nothing you can to do. them. Yeah, You're there's nothing fodder. you can do. Your ideas, I mean, if you have a good idea, your idea is what they want. The, everything else is, they'll, they'll gladly take your idea and si find a way to get rid of you. Yep. Uh, very unfortunate, but definitely uh, protect yourself. Protect yep. yourself. I'm gonna wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume. Don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open and Brewster is eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. No, run, 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 run. Oh, oh you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey guys, Squid King here. And today we're in a- <laughs> Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my God, you got the ax. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Ooh, sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true.
Can't run him carrying trash. And you can get away with one F-bomb per PG-13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap this effer up. Yes. <laughs>